everybody. Today we're going to be creating a refreshable scroll view. Although there's already a modifier that creates the pull to refresh action, it only enables this behavior on lists. Today we'll create a scroll view that also supports pull to refresh. Today we'll work on the WWDC app 21 that we have. So here we have this box list and it supports pull to refresh. This is a list, however, we want to implement it with a scroll view since we don't want all of the other things that come with a list. Here we have the implementation of that list. What we're gonna do is change it for a scroll view. As you can see, we are adding the refreshable modifier. This is what adds the pull to refresh and the refresh indicator. So we add a scroll view. We need to place this in a VStack. And that's it. We also don't need the list row separator modifier. And let's run and see how the experience looks. Visually, our list of books is there, but notice that when we scroll down, we don't get the refresh indicator that we used to have before. And that's because we are not triggering the refreshable action. What we're going to do now is create our own view, CWT scroll view. And this is the one that will have the pull to refresh action. Okay, so far our scroll view doesn't do anything special. It's just a scroll view. What we're going to do now is add a C stack and on top of the content that we're drawing, we're gonna place a view. This view is going to be the one that we're gonna track to see if the user uh, did the pull to refresh action. So for now, it's just gonna be a rectangle with a fixed width and height. Let's make it 10. And let's also give the rectangle a color so that we can see it. So we run and notice that the, we have this rectangle on top. So when we scroll, we're gonna track the change in the position of this red rectangle. And if it displaces a certain amount vertically, we trigger the refresh action. So to track the actual difference, we'll have an initial offset, which is the starting position of the rectangle, then the offset, which is the change that the rectangle is going to experience, and then a fixed height, which is after going through that threshold, we're gonna trigger the action. To track the displacement of the view, we're going to use geometry proxy, more specifically the method frame in. Okay, now that we have the geometry reader, we have a variable in the closure called proxy. This is the geometry proxy and we can call frame in. Now, however, how do we pass this value to the view each time it changes? We're gonna be using preference keys. So we have this method with this preference. We specify the key of the preference and we send the value, which again, is going to be the with the geometry proxy. Then we track that change with on preference change and we perform an action. The first thing we need is a preference key. So for that, we create a private struct. We don't need other views to know about this existence. We're gonna call it scroll offset preference. It extends preference key. We need to specify the default value. We're gonna, the value is going to be a CG float and it will start in zero. And then we need to, what's remaining here is just um, implementing the reduce method, which is just, uh, that the value equals next value. And that's it. We have our preference. Now to set the preference, we just specify scroll offset preference itself. And in value, we send proxy.framing global. And we track the origin, specifically the y value. Then on preference change, we just specify the same key and we track the change.
here on preference change is where we will check if the crawl offset passed the threshold to trigger the refresh. The first time we get a value on this closure, we're going to set the value for initial offset since we will need to have a reference value to calculate the uh, distance that the user has scrolled. On subsequent calls, what we do is calculate the difference and trigger the refresh if necessary. At this point, we are adding a lot of complexity to the view. So let's create a view model. The view will be in charge of capturing this value and then passes it to the view model. And the view model is the one that decides when the view triggers the refresh action. Not many changes here. We're just gonna move most of the values that were the state to the view model. And we just have one method that calculates the difference every time the offset value is updated. Our view model will be a state object. Let's move the body of this closure to our view models method. And here we just call the view models did update offset method. Oh, and yeah, we have a bug here. I'm just, I'm actually not, yeah, I need to update the offset with the new value. Uh, they also wasn't updating here, so it wouldn't have triggered anything. I subtract the initial offset, yes, and calculate the difference. So let's test this and see how it goes. Okay, so here we have the books. Let's scroll up. Nothing happens. Let's scroll down. Okay, and trigger the refresh. Now notice that we're triggering the refresh uh, every time that we update the value and we are past the threshold. So we need to avoid that because we just want to trigger the refresh once. We'll have a Boolean flag that we will use both in the view model and in the view to know if it is in a refreshing state. If it is, then we do not trigger again the refresh action. So once we go past the threshold, we toggle this flag on, on and we check uh, this flag before triggering again the refresh action. Then if the view is refreshing, we need to check the difference to see if it is less than our threshold so that the user can refresh again at a future time. Since this flag is published, we can listen to changes in this from our view. Now, we're going to do this for iOS 14 and up. If you want to support iOS 13 here, then you can just trigger the refresh with a closure. What we're going to do here is a little bit different. Why? Because we are supporting the refreshable modifier. So let's go to the documentation and check refreshable. So here we can see that when we implement the refreshable modifier, we are listening to the refresh action. When something triggers the refresh action, that's what calls the closure in the refreshable modifier. And that's what our CWT scroll view will do, call the refresh action. To trigger a refresh action, what you need is to have an environment variable, refresh, and then you just call that inside of the closure, and that will trigger the refresh action. Oh, right, according to the documentation, this is an async, so we need to put this inside of a task, 
and call await. Let's see if this works. So we have here, we have our list. Let's start scrolling. And there we go, we have our refresh action. And that was all. If the refreshable modifier is not enough for you in list, now you know how to create a refreshable scroll view to have different types of views. If you want to support iOS 13, just add a closure to your custom scroll view that you pass in the initializer. Otherwise, just trigger the refresh action like we did today. Hope you liked this video. Bye.